Our Father. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth. On earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this night. Give us this night. A daily rest. A daily rest. And forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those. As we forgive those. Who trespass against us. Who trespass against us. And lead us not. Lead us not, dear Lord. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us. But deliver us. From the evil one. Bring you more for thy is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever. Good night, God. Jesus is calling on October 6th. Be willing to follow wherever I lead. Follow me wholeheartedly. With glad anticipation, quickening your pace. Though you don't know what lies ahead. I know, and that is enough. Some of my richest blessings are just around the bend. Amen. Out, out of sight, but nonetheless very real. To receive these gifts, you must walk by faith. Out, by, not by sight. This doesn't mean closing your eyes to what is all around you. It means subordinating the visible world to the invisible shepherd of your soul. Sometimes I'll lead you up a high mountain with only my hand to support you. The higher you climb, the more spectacular the view becomes. Also, the more keenly you sense your separation from the world with all its problems, this frees you to experience exuberantly the joyous reality of my presence. Give yourself fully to these glowing moments. A wash in dazzling light. I will eventually lead you down the mountain, back into commu community with others. So I like continue to shine within you as you walk among the people again. First, Second Corinthians chapter five verse seven, Psalm ninety six six, John eight twelve, Psalm thirty six nine. So, I have two things tonight. First, Jesus listens, and this he's going to be listening to this prayer, the first prayer that goes out. And it's like a letter to Jesus. And that's how I like doing things with God, is sending letters. Precious Jesus, please help me to be joyful in hope. Sometimes the circumstances of my life and the condition of this world make it difficult for me to be joyful. You have been showing me that hope is the one and best place to find true joy. I want to know more and more fully the hope which you have called me and the riches of your glorious inheritance. How amazing it is that you have shared your inheritance with me, making me a co heir with you. When the circumstances are weighing me down, I grasp onto the hope for dear life. This empowers me not only to survive, but to thrive, living joyful, joyfully. I've discovered that hope is like a hot air balloon because it's very buoyant. It can, be lift, it can lift me up above my troubles. This enables me to soar in the heavens with you. 
where I can see things from a heightened big picture perspective. However, to embark on this heavenly journey, I must climb into the basket beneath the balloon, trustfully, fully, and that my hope in you will not let me down. I trust you, Jesus. Help me with my unbelief. In your exalted name, amen. And that is in Romans 12, 12, Ephesians 1, 18, Proverbs 23, 18, and Mark 9 and 24. Praise be to God. A prayer tonight from Jeremiah. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. Jeremiah 17, 14. Lord, you give me, you give grace to all those in need. When I feel overwhelmed, help me stand strong. When I am weary, give me resistance. When I am sick, bring me help in my mind and body. With your help, Lord, I will serve you to the best of my ability. Dear Heavenly Father, as I reach out to each and every one tonight and pray for them, for them and their loved ones, all of them, their families, their extended families, I pray, Lord, that each and every one get touched by your healing grace tonight. For whatever it may be, whether it be sickness, depression, anxiety, loneliness, whatever that is affecting them tonight, I pray in Jesus' name for their healing. Amen. Ezra and the Second Return If in fact Malachi prophesied during the prior 40 to 60 years, he paved the way for a time of renewed interest in the law and in the work of two men whose joint leadership brings a lot of time of religious reform, it happens during the reign of our taxes. Who took over the Persian rule upon the death of his father in 465 BC? Like Xerxes' final years, Atarxus' reign is also troublesome. With revolts to be quelled in Egypt and Greece, where has his father have been so insensitive, it is somewhat surprising then that any attempt by the Jews to by the Jews to strengthen their own nation will not be viewed more suspicion. However, it may well be that our taxes sees Israel as a peaceful nation minding its own business and geographically suited to be a buffer against Egypt. It's sufficiently undeveloped, redeveloped. Therefore, our taxes actually promotes further development of Israel, and particularly the promulgation of its unique law, which he greatly admires. With our Texas blessings, a great teacher of the law named Ezra, along with a county of over 1,500 Jews, leave Babylon in 458 BC to be the second contingent of Jews to return to Palestine since the exile after a rushed four-month trek, they arrive in Jerusalem with more treasures for the temple service and the ongoing redevelopment project. Ezra repair, prepares return. At, after these things during the reign of Artaxerxes, Artex, king of Persia, Ezra, son of Sariah, the son of Hazariah, the son of 
Hamariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Mirathor, the son of Zeariara, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. This Ezra came up from Babylon. He was a teacher well-versed in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. The king had granted him everything he asked for, for the hand of the Lord his God was on him. Some of the Israelites, including priests, Levites, musicians, cake keepers, and temple servants, also came up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. Artaxerxes authorism. This is a copy of the letter of the king had given to Ezra the priest, the teacher of the law, a man learned in manners concerning the commands and decrees of the Lord for Israel. Terexus, king of kings, to Ezra the priest, the teacher of the law, the God of heaven, greetings. Now I decree that any of the Israelites in my kingdom, including the priest and the Lev Levites who volunteered to go to Jerusalem with you may go. You are sent by the king and his seven adversaries to inquire about Judah and Jerusalem with regard to the law of your God, which is in your hand. Moreover, you are to take with you the silver and gold that the king and his advisers had freely given to the God of Israel. Those dwelling in Jerusalem together with all the silver and gold you may obtain from the providence of Babylon, as well as the free will offerings of the people and priests for the temple of their God in Jerusalem. With this money, be sure to buy bulls, rams, male lambs together with their grain offerings and drink offerings and sacrifice them on the altar of the temple of your God in Jerusalem. You and your fellow Israelites may then do whatever seems best with the rest of the silver and gold. In accordance with the will of your God, deliver to the God of Jerusalem all the articles entrusted to you for worship in your temple of your God. And anything else needed for the temple of your God that you are responsible to supply, you may provide from the royal treasury. Now I, King Art Arexius, decree that all the treasures of the trans Euphrates are to be provided with diligence wherever Ezra the priest, the teacher of law of God of heaven, may ask of you. Up to a hundred talents of silver, a hundred cores of wheat, a hundred baths of wine, a hundred baths of olive oil, and salt without limit. Whatever the God of heaven has prescribed, let it be done with diligence for the temple of the God of heaven. Why should his wrath fall on the realm of the king and of his sons? You are also to know that you have no authority to impose taxes, tributes, or duty on any of the priests, Levites, musicians, gatekeepers, temple servants, or other workers at this house of God. And you, Ezra, in accordance with the wisdom of your God, which you possess, appoint magistrates and judges to administer justice to all the people of trans Euphrates and all who know the laws of your God and you are to teach any who do not know them. Whoever does not obey the law of your God, the law of the king must surely be punished by death. Bobby. Ezra's gratitude. Praise be to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, who has put in, into the king's heart 
to bring honor to the house of the of the Lord in Jerusalem. In this way, who has extended his good favor to me before the king and his advisors and all the king's powerful officials because of the hand of the Lord my God was on me. I took courage and gathered leaders from Israel to go up with me. Levites summoned. I settled them at the canal that flows toward Ahawa, and we camped there three days. When I checked among the people, and the priests found no Levites there. So I summoned Eliezer, Ariel, Shemaiah, Elathana, Jarib, Eliatha, Nathan, Zechariah, and Meshulam, who were leaders in Joab and Elathan, who were men learning up and who and I ordered them to go to Ido, the leader of, in Casafia. I told him this what the saying might bring attendance to us for the house of our God because the gracious hand of our God was on us. They brought Sherebiah, a gay man, from his their descendants of Mahiah, son of Levi, the son of Israel, and Sherebiah, son and brothers. Eighteen in all, and Hashaniah, together with Yeshaya from the descendant of Morai, and his brothers and nephew, twenty in all. They also brought 220 of the temple servants, a body that David and the officials had established. So this the Levites, all were registered by name. A prayer for safety. There by Ahaba Canal, I proclaimed a fast so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us and for our children with all our possessions. I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen, horsemen to protect us from the enemies on the road because we had told the king, the gracious hand of our God is on everyone who looks to him, but his great anger is against all who forsake him. So we fasted and petitioned our God about this, and he answered our prayer. Valuables entrusted. Then I set apart 12 of the leading priests, namely, Sheribath, Hashabiah, and 10 of their brothers. I weighed out to them offering of silver, gold, and the articles, the king and his advisors, his officials, and all Israel presented, there, were, there they donated for the house of our God. I weighed out for them 650 talents of silver. Silver articles weighing 100 talents, 100 talents of gold, 20 bowls of gold valued at 1,000 dollars, and two fine articles of polished bronze, as precious as gold. I said to them, you as well, as these articles are consecrated to the Lord, the silver, the gold, are free will offerings to the Lord, the God of your ancestors. Guard them carefully until you weigh them out in the cha chambers of the house of the Lord in Jerusalem before the leading priests and the Levites and the family heads of Israel. Then the priests and the Levites received silver and gold, sacred articles had been weighed out to be taken to the house of our God in Jerusalem. The journey to Jerusalem. On the 12th day of the first month, we set out for Ahava Canal to go to Jerusalem. The hand of our Lord was on us. He protected us from the enemies and bandits along the way. 
So we arrived in Jerusalem where we rested three days. Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in the fifth month of the seventh year of the king. He had begun his journey from Babylon on the first day of the first month and arrived in Jerusalem on the first day of the 15th month, of the fifth month, for the gracious hand of his God was on him, for Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of God and to it teaching its decrees. Bobby? And laws in Israel. Enumeration of returners. You know, in enumeration, enumeration of the returnees. These are the family heads and those who registered with them who came up with me for during the reign of King Artaxas, from descendants of Phineas and Gershom, of descendants of Ithamar and Daniel, of descendants of David, Hattush, of the descendants of Shechaniah, of the descendants of Pahath Moab, Eliahani, so it's a riot, and with him, two hundred men. Of the descendants of Zathu, Shechaniah, and son Jehazel, with him, five, three hundred men. And of the descendants of Athen, Abad, son of Jerusalem, and with him, fifty men. Of the descendants of Elam, Jeshia, son of Daya, with him, seventy men. Of the descendants of Shephaniah, Zebediah, son of Michael, and with him, eighty men. Of the descendants of Joab, Obadiah, son of Gehel, and with two or eighteen men. Of the descendants of Bani, Shalmaneth, Son of Josephina, and with him 160 men. After the descendants of Babai, Zechariah, son of Babai, and with him 28 men. Of the descendants of Asgad, Johanan, son of Hakasan, and with him 110 men. Of the descendants of Adonokim, the last ones whose name were Elephant. Jewel and Shemaiah with them sixty men. Of the descendants of Big Vai, Uzai, and Zakur, and with them seventy men. Accounting and sacrifice. On the fourth day in the house of our God, we weighed out the silver and gold and the sacred articles into the hands of Miramoth, son of Uriah the priest. Eliezer, son of Phineas, was with him. And so were the Levites, Jehoshaphat, son of Geshua, and Noadiah, son of Benoni. Everything was accounted for by the number and weight, and the entire weight was accorded at that time. Then the exiles who had returned from captivity sacrificed burnt offerings. To the God of Israel, twelve bulls for all Israel, ninety-six rams, seven the seven male lambs, and as a sin offering, twelve male goats. All this was a burnt offering to the Lord. They also delivered the king's orders to the royal satraps and to the governors of the Trinity priests who then gave assistance to the people and to the house of God. Heavenly Father, for confess the name of Jesus, the devil has no more power me, not believe in his lies. Always remember, the devil plays the power of blind signs and bake wonders. Praise be to God. Learn from me. 
Be still and know that I am God. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. <laughs> Perhaps this night when you are reading this, your, your, your day your day was not so good. Your heart was already heavy, or maybe at the end, end of the day you felt weakened by the burdens you have taken on. Rest in the kindness, rest in the kindest person there ever was. Let his words smooth and strengthen you. Perhaps you have taken on more than what God is asking you to, physically or emotionally. Christ himself makes it clear that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. If your yoke is too heavy, perhaps you aren't supposed to be carrying it in the first place. Learn from Jesus. Refusing wrong yokes won't necessarily feel that. Refusing the wrong yokes won't feel necess won't necessarily feel natural to you. But ask and learn as you do. He will strengthen your ability to know the difference so that you might enjoy his rest. Jesus, help me to learn from you and rest in you. I don't want to carry any yokes that you are not asking me to. Give me the wisdom and discernment as I walk into each new day for you. Praise be to God. That's what I always ask. Help me through each and every day. Tonight, excuse me, he closed my hand. Oh boy, am I tired. A true disciple. The relationship between the discipleship and his teacher is not merely that of a student listening to the lecture or a passively interested listener. A disciple listens with the attention and intention he drinks in every word of his teacher, making every inflection of voice with an intense desire to imply what he has learned. That is like listening and really what they call eating the word into your soul. And this is what God has to say tonight to all of us who are a follower and those that will and shall come to know Jesus as Savior. You've been a follower of mine for a while, but I want you to consider a deeper commitment as a disciple of my son Jesus. In my word, he explains what this means. You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. Though a life, throughout a lifestyle of faith and obedience, you have become more and more like Christ, it wasn't an easy path for the disciples of Jesus either. They left their homes, they gave up their security, they took up their crosses, followed him. Living as a disciple may look different for you than it did for the Jesus' first follow, followers, but it's still demanding and still requires sacrifice. It means, feeding, it means feeding the poor, caring for the weak, and knowing my word, and sharing it with others. It requires a life of prayer, and it includes walking in the fullness and power of my Holy Spirit, and showing love to your enemies. If you agree to be a crew, crew disciple, you'll tell others about the transformation my son has brought into your life how he sustained you in the midst of pain and suffering. It's the closest and most feeling cho choice you can make at this po point of your journey. It's worth every ounce of sacrifice. You won't regret saying anything. Calling the crowd to join his discipleship, he says, if any one of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. 
We all have certain crosses to bear in our life. And God helps us to get through all of those things. I pray tonight that whatever we was able to tell you or whatever you were able to understand, I know some of the, the Bible can be boring when they when you have to repeat all the names and how they're said and everything else. But we don't understand when each and every one of us is giving a name when we're born. Our name has a meaning. Look up the meaning of your name tonight. You will be surprised in what it means in different languages. I was surprised when I looked up my name. It means that I'm a gift. I'm a gift from God. And it is very nice to know that I was God's gift to you, to get the word to you, to know that God loves you. Oh, the devil's tried to kill me many times. Let me tell you, there's no end to where the devil has tried to take my life, either in depression or sickness. I've been there. Car accidents. God has chosen me for a time like this to get out his word because it's so important. Because the real bad stuff is coming. And the thing is, you need to have hope that you're going to get through it. Don't have despair. Times are going to get really bad. Let God help you to prepare for the bad times. That's a sad thing that I have to say tonight, but it's the truth. Can't always just sugarcoat it like some preachers do. I'm not a preacher. I'm just a gift from God. <laughs> she has a sugar coat or chocolate coat? <laughs> I have not been sugarcoating. <laughs> I just am a gift from God to get the word out. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart tonight. Let him in. You won't be sorry. It will change your life. May God bless you and keep you. And may his light shine upon you. Good night. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, take care of yourselves. Good night, amen.